Hello, I'm Tom Rothman of 20th Century Fox. Welcome to Fox Legacy. We're glad to have you with us tonight. Way back in 1986, in my youth and childhood, I knew a young and then relatively obscure director out of NYU named Spike Lee. At the very moment, his small independent film, She's Gotta Have It, and he both blew up to be big sensations. Spike said something then that amazed me for its truth and simplicity. He said that one of the reasons that black audiences responded so strongly to his film was that they had never seen a black woman kiss on screen. Now, I don't know if that's literally true or not, as maybe during the black exploitation era of the 70s, those sexploitation scenes involved a kiss or two, but his larger point was certainly right. What he meant, I think, was that through a century of film history, from the racism of Birth of a Nation through the blackface early minstrels, through the tokenism of playing slaves and maids, uh, Actually, I think it was Hattie McDaniels who said she'd rather play a maid than be one, which is actually not a choice for the film business to be particularly proud of. But through that, through the black exploitation period, the more contemporary urban gangster drug dealer genre, through all that time, middle class, regular, hardworking, family oriented African American audiences had, unlike their white counterparts, never seen themselves and their real issues portrayed in American film. This, I think, was especially true for African-American women, who other than as entertainers, sex objects, I guess, or maybe drug addicts, had almost never seen themselves on film as they are in life. One of the films in the 20th Century Fox canon that we as a studio can be most proud of, I think, is the first major studio movie to change all that, Waiting to Exhale. Waiting to Exhale, the film phenomenon, existed because of Waiting to Exhale, the publishing phenomenon. Terry McMillan's book, which made the New York Times bestseller list the first week it was published, and stayed on that list for 38 weeks. It was a revelation for black women in America. It showed them as they are, strong, resourceful, intelligent, and increasingly unwilling to be subservient to undeserving men. And it struck a big chord. But the publishing business is a business where niche titles can prosper. Movies are, sadly, expensive. And accordingly, they must reach a wider audience to succeed. And no one knew if there was such an audience out there for a film like Waiting to Exhale because no one had ever tried. Now, here's where I think the passion and belief of a studio executive can change the shape and history of film culture. Now, that's not the studio executive of common cliche and current stereotype the empty, venal, backstabbing entourage type. But instead, the kind I know. Well, okay, maybe I know one or two of that other kind along the way, but most executives are actually inspired, smart, gutsy, and forward-thinking. My colleague, Beth Gabler, is exactly such an executive, and she bought the rights to exhale from a very talented producer named Deb Schindler because they both believed that female audiences of all races, white or black, would relate to the four fabulous protagonists of Terry McMillan's creation. Elizabeth hired Ron Bass to co-write the script with Terry and then made the bold choice to hire Forrest Whitaker, a well-known actor but a man, note, a man, who had only directed one cable film before it. By the way, one of the great things for Fox is that began a long association with Forrest continued through his directing Hope Floats for Us, winning the Academy Award for The Last King of Scotland, and now starring with Keanu Reeves in a new film. But, again, the fact that the group of people behind the scenes responsible for getting XL made represented a mix of genders and races speaks, I think, to the universality of the movie. No matter what we are, we are a family. Though I must say that universal appeal or not, I am not sure I have ever in my whole movie career heard an audience response quite as loud as the screams of laughter and cheers from the largely African-American female audience at the very first public preview of that movie in Los Angeles. I was standing in the back of the theater when the characters had the following exchange. I'm leaving you for her. This is a test of the emergency broadcast system. 
This is only a test. Don't worry. You can have the house, and you know I'll take care of my kids. Will you wait a minute. I give you 11 fucking years of my life, and you're telling me that you're leaving me for a white woman? Would it be better if she were black? No, it'd be better if you were black. At which point, the audience in the theater pretty much tore the roof off. And that audience response was just the beginning of what became almost a cultural revolution for one part of contemporary cinema. So, exhale and enjoy. And I'll see you afterwards to tell you the rest of the tale. So, Waiting to Exhale, a rare and first of its kind film. What happened? Well, defying all the naysayers and upending the prognostications of the punditocracy, the film opened at Christmas 1995 and was number one at the box office, joined by Whitney Houston's song, also number one. But there comes a point when, when we exhale. Well, hello. Hello. You look better than I remember. It's funny. You don't. It earned in one weekend's box office about what it cost to make the film. Women lined up around the block outside of theaters on opening night as if they had waited their whole lives for the film, which in fact was actually an understatement because African-American women had waited whole generations. Its success and its breakthrough portrayal of real black women in positively empowered roles became not just movie news, but front page news itself. And in Exhale's wake, followed not just movies for black women, like How Stella Got Her Groove Back or Soul Food, but a whole new class of movies about black men and women that are character-driven and not devoted to guns or drugs. Films like The Best Man, Love and Basketball, Keela and the Bee, Antoine Fisher, and many, many, many others. These movies aren't just a passing phase, but instead now an established part of American cinema going. And the Fab Four of goddess power, to use Forrest Whitaker's phrase, they help lead the way. When I was fortunate enough several months ago to be asked by the great Halle Berry to speak at the dedication of her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, I referenced the long cultural journey that her becoming the first woman of color to win a Best Actress Academy Award reflected. This sidewalk, literally and figuratively, represents the history of Hollywood. Yet throughout all of that history, only one woman of color has ever won the Academy Award for Best Actress. And as Hallie said when she accepted that award, she said, this moment is for Dorothy Dandridge, Lena Horne, and Diane Carroll. It's for the women that stand beside me, Jada Pinkett, Angela Bassett, Vivica Fox, and it's for every nameless, faceless woman of color that now has a chance because this door tonight has been opened. Well, Hallie's words resonate, and in its own small little way, some of the same can be said for the film you just saw, Terry McMillan's Waiting to Exhale. Here's to peace of mind, and all the happiness that your heart and hand can hold, because Lord knows you deserve it. Oh. 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 We hope you enjoyed it, and we hope to see you again the next time we make history here on the Fox Movie Channel. I'm Tom Rothman. Good night.